Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here. And today we're gonna be looking at our TC's Phantom Assassin. We're gonna be taking a look at kind of a different item build that he goes this game. Instead of going the traditional Deso, he actually shifts into a Manta style build. So I'd like to talk about why he does that, how he dominates on this hero. He also goes Orb of Corrosion in the landing stage, which I wouldn't say is particularly shocking as it works with Stifling Dagger, but it's a very aggressive playstyle of Phantom Assassin. And I wanna talk about how you guys can do the same. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason the reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, so in the leaning stage, I wanna keep it really simple for you guys. Just follow what I'm about to say and you're gonna get off to a good start. The first thing to understand is that PA is not a great laner, okay? She is when she hits timings, but until she hits those timings, she's not a good laner. So what are those timings? The main timing is Orb of Corrosion. Previous to Orb of Corrosion, you have a hard time chasing people down. You generally don't have enough HP to actually commit to the kill. And so the Corrosion is your timing. You'll notice that he completely is rushing this item, literally completely rushing it. Now, the key to understanding how to snowball is basically getting this item as soon as humanly possible. So you can even notice, I, I really want you guys to pay attention to this kill. When they are going on his Bane, what is he doing, right? When they are going on his Bane here, he is literally last hitting and denying. He doesn't walk over at all the only time he walks over is to you know finish off this kill that was basically given to him on a silver platter i mean that of course you're going to go on that the guy's like 100 hp but it's low committal he's not going to take any damage he already got a bunch of cs a deny and then finishes the clip with a deny on the bane as well so literally perfect this is exactly what you want a good trade low commitment of resources early on and last hitting you need to have your gameplay look like this other than that, previous to the corrosion timing, all I want you guys to do is focus on buying your stat items, and if the lane is very difficult, use dagger to last hit as much as possible. Don't be afraid to use it, it's only 30 mana, and at level 2, it actually does 40% extra of your attack damage, so it's very easy to last hit with it. Now in this next clip, you're really going to see the potential of going this basically stat space build. It's also really crazy that PA can have like 950 HP five minutes into the game, right? If you click on other heroes, just for a bit of comparison, strength hero, 800, right? 640, 760. It's actually ridiculous how much HP PA has at this point in the game with this item build. And so basically the idea here is you want to take all in trades. And the reason why PA is so good at this is if you look at this trade, as we'll watch here, you can't get away from PA. Orb of Corrosion plus Dagger is like a 40% slow. And so look at this Venno. After Venno gets daggered, his movement speed is 103. That's practically zero, right? It's actually more than a 50% slow in this case. I mean, ridiculous, right? Also, you have to consider that Venno's armor is getting dropped quite significantly by three, which is really good for a, a, you know, a PA, of course. And yeah, even though he ends up dying in this clip, you can just notice that the Venno absolutely cannot get away. Also, this is a very mana intensive hero. So if you go greedy and you don't buy magic wand, you will naturally fall into cases where you do not have enough mana for your spell. For instance, in this clip here, he's able to pop the wand and that secures the kill onto the Venno, which is a massive kill. Also, if Hoodwing didn't rotate in, he would have likely killed the Earth Spirit as well. On top of that, you can really see he's quadrupling down on the idea of manning up when he goes in. Right? Look at these items. You might be like, what are these items? These are treads components. A lot of people don't know you can build treads from Band of Elven Skin. You do not have to go build the strength. You can buy any of the 450 gold stat items and transition that into treads. And this item is far better for manning up than boots. It's not better for kiting in and out, but the thing is, PA doesn't need that because she has dagger and blink strike. And I can guarantee you, as we see our TCTP in here, if this hoodwink wasn't in his lane being annoying, he 100% could go on this Venno. Especially if he's level 6, I mean, you absolutely just go on the Venno. Like, he could just run at this guy, no problem. I mean, he has a severe HP advantage, he does an insane amount of damage with the Gloves of Haste and his W, and so, yeah, he could just go on him. And unfortunately, Arteezy ends up getting four man rotated on, which ends up taking down his tower. But as you'll see here, half HP or spirit bursted very quickly. And this is the stats coming into play. Easily kills him. 
And the same thing is going to follow for Venno. Absolutely nothing Venno could do. RTZ easily could have solo killed him here. His clockwork ends up TPing in, but honestly, he did not need the clockwork. Like, Dagger Slow is, is honestly more than enough against these heroes with no disengage. It's just a free kill. And so, yeah, here's my advice, okay? Play the way I told you. Focus on your CS early on. When you get the Corrosion, especially when you get your Wand, that's when you want to kick up the tempo. On top of that, the third and honestly the most important thing for Phantom Assassin is picking it with a lane Dominator support. Heroes like Bane and Undying that can enable you when you are weak, which is early on into the lane, level 1, level 2 with no items, right? When you are weak then, the Undyings, the Banes, who set up the kills at level 2 and level 3 because they chip people down at level 1 are super optimal. So just keep that in mind for your matches. Next up, the next thing you want to do is literally just AFK in your lane. That's all you need to do. Just, just unironically stay in your lane. Don't rotate. Don't go mid. Don't go bottom. Don't try to take bottom tower. Like, yes, there are situations where you should do that. The situation in which you would leave your lane is if your, your jungle is just getting completely collapsed on, completely rotated on. But in the majority of games, if you have the opportunity to just flash farm the jungle, use your treads, go on int, blink strike to the camps, kill off the large creep, just do that over and over again. You jungle absurdly quickly. It is really insane. Also, if you're able to get a broom handle, a possessed mask, or a chipped vest, these items will make your jungling even better. And yeah, he honestly just sits in the jungle. Like, I, I, I can't simplify this stuff enough, guys. Like, I really do believe that a lot of carry players make their lives a lot harder than they have to be. Just goes from camp to camp to camp. He notices that the enemy team's playing mid-bottom side. Doesn't have to make any crazy moves. Doesn't have to make any crazy plays. You don't want to show up to the fights. He's going to Battle Fury PA build, you know? It's it's really that simple. The second thing I want to talk about is the item following Battle Fury. A lot of people go Deso, and honestly, I think most games, it's generally bad to go Deso second item. Yes, there's situations where the enemy team just has no magical damage, and you can just kite around the fights with the Deso, and it feels great. But 9 times out of 10, Phantom Assassin just inherently does a ton of damage because she has a built-in slow mobility spell and attack speed spell. But in general, going BKB is just going to enable that inherent damage. Deso just doubles down on it, and so it doesn't really protect PA against her biggest weakness, which is magical damage throughout the entirety of the game, that's the case. And so you're better off playing it safe, going BKB. Also, the best part about BKB, in my opinion, that people don't understand, is that it allows you to split push very comfortably. When you're playing Phantom Assassin, you want to push out the waves, right? You have a Battle Fury, you have Blur, but you're of course going to get ganked from time to time. Your hero naturally gets ganked. It, it's not good against magical damage spells and control early game. And so BKB enables you to play out on the map. Next up, we should briefly discuss Blur and why it's PA's best ability. I, I genuinely think people don't really understand that Blur is like what makes this hero broken if she gets items. Like PA's downside, just to be clear, guys, PA's downside is not her farming. It's not her team fighting in the early game. It's basically her late game sometimes isn't great. So she has like a mediocre minute 40 to 50 timing in a lot of games. She just gets kited from my experience because she doesn't have a stun. And her laning stage generally can be punished. She can get ganked in the early game. However, if you can manage to get past that stage, which he has this game, this is when Blur becomes the best spell in Dota. You notice he's going to use it to shove bot wave. In your average pub, if you blur and shove a wave, you will never get caught. You barely will get caught if you just shove a wave in the first place. You're not going to get caught. So just shove the waves, okay? So he goes bottom here, kicks it in, right? After that, he can play up. Like this positioning seems kind of insane, right? But Invoker's dead, Earth Spirit's dead, sees the Venom mid, and he's got Blur. Blur is nuts because you can auto attack creeps while smoked. That's crazy, guys. That is crazy. And by the way, the smoke radius in which Blur breaks is so small. It's like melee range. You have to be literally on top of PA for Blur to go away. So you can almost always know if there's someone in the area. I mean, you're going to see them first most of the time. And so you can see in this clip here, he's just going to rotate on mid. There's literally no way for them to see him coming. Eventually, he's able to clean up the hoodwing, blinks in, gets the kill. By the way, just as a heads up for a bit of execution, you almost always want to lead with dagger if you can. Uh, the reason for that is if you lead with blink strike, then dagger, often you will lose an auto attack in the animation of dagger. So you want to throw the dagger first, then blink strike just to maximize damage, maximize the burst. You want to give people the smallest amount of time to react so that hopefully you can kill them before you even have to use BKB or they can just get anything off in general, whether or not it's a Ghost Scepter, Glimmer, Yules, a stun, doesn't matter. Um, so you notice here, the only reason why he blink strikes on the Hoodwink in this exact moment was he's actually a little bit out of dagger range because of his level 15 Phantom Strike cast range. It's actually a much larger cast range. 
than Dagger. And so, yeah, he goes in with the Phantom Strike because of the range and finishes off the kill. And yeah, this is this is what you want to do as PA. When you get ahead and you get this BKB timing, you want to be looking for these gaps where people separate. You should not feel afraid. You should not be playing defensive on the map. You want to play up and out and look for plays with the with basically your free smoke. Next, let's quickly talk about talents and then get into the Manta style. So at level 10, honestly, the stifling deck cooldown, in my opinion, is very tempting. Bringing it down to a four second cooldown is incredible for early fights. And honestly, it feels good. The problem is the other talent is incredible. Phantom Strike duration is just so good. Getting a full extra second of 150 attack speed is so valuable. So I think there's no way you can skip that any game. It's because it's your farming spell as well, right? The extra attack speed is how you flash farm. You're not daggering consistently for creeps. I mean, you can a little bit, but you know, <laughs> Phantom Strike is just much better. At level 15, Phantom Strike cast range is a no brainer. Always take this. It's so good for jumping the backline, jumping the targets who get stunned. At level 20, you can take Blur Evasion if they have a lot of right click. The enemy team has practically no right click this game, so there's no reason for Blur Evasion. However, if they have like PL or Naga, especially these illusion heroes that generally don't buy MKB early on, it's particularly valuable. Um, in this game, armor corruption absolutely makes a lot of sense. The enemy team's pretty low armor, and on top of that, uh, it's not a good Blur Evasion game. And at level 25, Triple Stifling Dagger is better. Honestly, 7% Coupe de Gras. It's not bad. It's 7%. It's just not great, and Tripling Stifling Dagger is great with Battle Fury for clearing waves. If you get lucky, you just like crit multiple heroes. It's so good for chipping people down when you're going high ground as well, so Triple Stifling Dagger, in my opinion, is always the way to go. All right, next up, let's talk about the Manta. Honestly, it's just a god Manta game. It's more of a, a matchup dependent thing. So in this game in particular, the enemy team has very many spells to dispel. Number one, Cold Snap. Number two, if Invoker's going it, Vessel, he did. Vessel, he could purge Vessel. If Ricky was to go to Fiesel, then the Fiesel and Ricky. Honestly, even being able to use Manta when you're smokescreen just to give yourself a bit of time to get out of it is honestly very good. Venom spells, Venomous Scale, Poison Sting, both purgeable. Um, Hoodwinks W, I think you can dodge it. Pretty certain you can dodge Bushwhack. With, uh, with Manta, Magnetize. As you can see, there are just so many uses for Manta this game. It's really good in that regard. Um, I will say that in general, I'm a much bigger fan of going the Deso after the BKB. I think just being able to basically two or three shot supports is the best way to play in pubs, especially when you're not that good at using Manta. Uh, Manta is a very situational item in terms of the application of the item, casting the item at the right time. It's much harder than people think. Usually people use it way too early and they just waste it. They don't bait out any spells, bait out any tension. They kind of just pop it. All right, now let's quickly, before we end off the video, talk about general teamfight execution. So I want to go a little bit advanced here. Um, the first thing you should consider is, do you have the capability to jump a target? that you can kill with without your BKB getting forced. If you can jump someone who can force BKB, it's valuable because, well, you don't have to use your BKB. PA is often very reliant on her BKB to kill people. Just in general, most heroes have disables, they have, you know, kite spells, four staffs, glimmer caves, and if you don't have BKB, a lot of the time you'll just get kited out, you won't get the burst. So the most optimal play in that case is of course looking for people who you can go on who are either stunned or just don't have spells that are gonna, well, yeah, force out your BKB. So as you see here, this is in this case a, a stunned isolated target, super optimal, unable to force the PA BKB. Even if he did go on this guy and he wasn't stunned, he can't force PA BKB. Yes, he could roll on him and stun him. It's like a two second stun, 1.5, something like that. And so it's, you're, you're not gonna get completely threatened out. The only time you'd have to BKB that short of a stun is if like a Sven with Silver Edge was right behind him with, with the chain stun, right? In that case, you'd have to worry, but this is the perfect jump. Stunned, isolated, away from the enemy team. This is what you're looking for. That's the perfect jump. After that, really clean dagger onto the Hoodwink. Honestly, going on Venno, usually not that great, unless you're like wildly far ahead. He is wildly far ahead, so he can get away with this, but usually Venno is a hero that's naturally going to buy Halberd, Greaves, Ghost Scepter, Force Staff. So instead, he actually ends up shifting over to the Ricky and eventually just clicking him down, even using the BKB there to secure the kill to get rid of the smoke screen, which is quite, uh, quite cool. So yeah, he uses that off to the Venno next, secures the kill. And so yeah, that was just beautiful, very clean, simple, but effective 
and clean fight execution. Just make sure you're keeping that in mind. Are you paying attention to your teammates? Are you paying attention to your stunts? And are you looking for isolated targets? Because what most PAs do wrong is they just jump in at five heroes, insta-pop their BKB when they probably didn't have to, and then the fight it doesn't go their way. But right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, remember, keep it simple. Laning Sage, passive early on. Corrosion, step up the pace. Look for lane dominator. Mid game, play on your own safe lane as long as humanly possible. Firm the lane, firm the jungle. Max your W, by the way. I didn't mention that earlier. I'll quickly show off the skibble, only because I didn't. Uh, so the general skibble that you're going to be going is dagger, phantom strike, dagger, phantom strike. Sometimes people will actually take blur at level 3 or level 4 if the enemy lane is a lot of physical damage. A lot of right clicks, maybe a nature's profit. Blur can be very good, but that wasn't really the case in this lane. He ended up taking it at level 5. This is good. Honestly, at some point... Yeah. You don't want to skip it for too long because it lets you avoid gangs, right? It lets you avoid gangs, it lets you set up gangs. It's just a really good value point. Then at 6, crit. At level 7, he actually takes dagger. Honestly, I think usually I wouldn't recommend taking dagger at 7. I would just max out my phantom strike at that point so I can start jungling when the time comes. And yeah, that's the build. Typically, you're going to max out dagger after into blur and uh, talents when you can. PA is very, very good talents, so don't skip your talents and ulti whenever. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.